Good morning and happy Sabbath to all of you who, is, who are joining our worship service via streaming this morning. Um, I pray that you had a good holiday yesterday um, as you spend time with your friends and family and as we acknowledge the birth of the Savior of the world, the best gift ever given to mankind. Um, thank you for joining us once again via streaming. And so we're going to start off with a few announcements. Um, our bulletin is also located on the church's website, so feel free to read the announcements there. I'm just going to highlight a few of them. First of all, um, for all church board members, we have a board meeting this coming Monday, the 28th at 6 o'clock. For board members, just, there will be a church board meeting um, Monday on the 28th at 6 o'clock. Also, I'd like to invite you to our prayer meeting, which is every Tuesday from 7.30 to 8. And that is via teleconference, and the numbers and the code should be in your bulletin. If not, um, feel free to get a hold of one of us, and we will give that information to you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, we all know that this year has been a very trying year um, as far as people and um, resources and with the pandemic. Um, we just ask that you will um, keep the school in your prayer, and if you can help anyway financially with support of our local church school. Um, the announcement there is also in the bulletin as far as their needs um, of any resources that you may have that you can donate to the school, and also um, for your faithfulness with the local church as well. Um, with everything that's going on in 2020, um, there's been a lot of people, not a lot, but there's some people who say that we need a reset come January. You know, people have a reset with uh, New Year's resolutions. People have reset with things that they're going to try to accomplish for the upcoming year. Well, just to let you know um, that Pastor Doug Batchelor is going to have a Reset in the Word series on 3ABN, uh, Amazing Facts TV, YouTube, and I think also... Um, there's one more platform, but I can't remember. Anyway, that is going to be starting this Friday at 7 p.m., um, Sabbath at 11, and another final presentation, 7 o'clock Saturday evening, if you want to join him um, in his focus on resetting in the Word of God. <clears throat> um, talk about resetting. Um, we know how important prayer is. And so in conjunction with resetting in the word, there will be the annual 10 days of prayer coming up at the beginning of January. And right now, the pastor is going to say a few words about that. My mask off. Happy Sabbath, church. So great to see you here for this special Sabbath, and uh, for those who are watching uh, online, uh, the 10 days of prayer is a very uh, important uh, time for us, because every year, this is uh, how we like to start the year, focusing on prayer. And we know that uh, because of a pandemic, it's hard to uh, have meetings, to pray together, uh, but uh, we still want to do that. We want to give our church the opportunity to participate. And, uh, and we have some information that I think would be very important for us uh, to share. So then you know uh, that uh, this is going to be an emphasis in our church. Um, during those 10 days of prayer, starting on January 6th and going through uh, January 16th, so we are going to be uh, praying uh, through uh, phone, uh, using Zoom, twice a day during the 10 days of prayer. 6 a.m., so for those who like to, to wake up very early, and if you have to like, go to, uh, to work, and, uh, and this is a good time for you, so you can join us. Uh, it's 15 minutes. 6 to 6.15, you don't need to show your face, but we are going to give you the information 
so that uh, you have access to that. Uh, so, and then uh, you don't need to say anything, but it's a time just for uh, a Bible reading, for a prayer, and then you're ready to go. And the same thing at 6 p.m. So if you cannot make it at 6 a.m. or if you want to make it both, 6 a.m., 6 p.m., so 15 minutes at the end of the day that uh, you can uh, go to our church Zoom and, uh, and the information is going to be given uh, so then uh, you can participate. Again, some Bible reading, some prayer time, and, uh, and that's to, for us to emphasize prayer. So every day, uh, you're going to receive a text. So, and um, I believe many of you guys are already receiving some, bi- uh, some, some text from, from uh, a number that is the number that we use to communicate uh, uh, with our church members. Uh, so if, you don't, if you're not in this system, please talk with me and say, Pastor, I would like to receive those notifications. So just give me your name and number, and I will be happy to put you there because every day during those 10 days of prayer, you're going to receive something like this, 10 days of prayer, devotional day one, and there will be a link. And then you can go, just click the link, and you're going to have uh, the devotional for the day that you can read, that you can pray, and, um, and go to your day. So you can do that anytime. So from your cell phone. So, and uh, that is going to be done during do- those 10 days of prayer. One more thing that we would like to emphasize is that uh, you find a prayer partner. So it could be your uh, husband, wife, children, a friend from church. But... Uh, uh, Make the commitment to pray, even if it is for five minutes by phone uh, with that person during the 10 days of prayer. So trying to make a list of people that you have in mind that uh, might need Jesus. Uh, So when we pray for others, that will make a difference in, in their lives, especially when we are praying for the conversion. So the Bible says, seek knock, find, like if we seek a knock, we are going to find. So we have to do that. So as we ask the Holy Spirit, and that's why the, the, the topic, the theme for uh, those 10 days of prayer in January 2021 is seeking, seeking the Holy Spirit, seeking His presence. Uh, so um, this is part of uh, our plan the beginning of the year for 2021. So we want to see uh, the Holy Spirit working in our lives in such a powerful way. And um, the theme for our church for 2021 is uh, proclaiming Jesus passionately. So if we have Jesus in our lives, it's going to be just natural sharing him. So uh, I will be talking about that more in the following Sabbath. And, uh, and uh, on Facebook, so you're going to be receiving messages, text messages, just to emphasize uh, the, the 10 days of prayer. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor, for that. Um, as you may notice, those who are watching, um, the screen is not down. And so once we have the doors open, that means that there is going to be a baptism today. Someone has decided to follow Christ um, through the way of baptism. So let's continue to pray for the baptismal candidate to grow in Christ as they made a major decision to follow him and his word. Um, Once again, the church's bulletin is available on the church's website. So feel free to uh, read over each announcement, um, especially the prayer matters a section of our bulletin, and once again, the school and the school's needs. Um, And so at this time, we're going to do our opening song. And if you have a church hymnal or probably get it through your phone, it is going to be hymn number 121, Go Tell It on a Mountain. Number 121, 
all three verses. now time for our congregational prayer, and I, like you all, have things that I would like to uplift to our God in prayer, um, as far as family things, personal struggles, just life in general. Um, so at this time, if you so choose, as far as possible, let us kneel as we go to the throne of grace. Gracious Father in heaven, Lord, as the world paused yesterday to recognize you sending your son in a lowly manger 2,000 years ago to be born of a woman that he may show us the way and be our sacrifice. Father, as, we rec as the world recognized the baby Jesus, May we recognize the man, Jesus, the Savior of the world. And may we choose to make him the Lord of our lives. Thank you for sending this precious gift to us, Lord. No gift on earth can match the gift that you gave to all humanity to send your son your precious son, to die in our place for our sins. And Father, may that acknowledgement lead us to the cross to humble ourselves and to say thank you. Thank you for your gift. Thank you for your love. 
and thank you for your sacrifice. Lord, each and every one of us can truly say that 2020 has been a very trying year. Some, it has affected more than others, but Father, we just want to say thank you because you led us through this difficult time in Earth's history. And Father, as many people are looking forward with great anticipation to 2021, Lord, we know we have no guarantee of what will happen in 2021. The only blessed assurance that we have is that you still sit on the throne, that you are still in charge, and if we continue to put our hope, our faith, our life, our confidence in you, that you have promised to see us through. Lord, as we are about to embrace a brand new year, we just pray, Lord, as a church, as a denomination, participates in the 10 days of prayer, that we will earnestly fall on our knees and seek your face. For the Bible says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Help us, Lord, with our daily devotions. Help us, Lord, in bringing all that we are and all that we have and all that we struggle with to the foot of the cross and give it to you. And may we have the faith that you would give us the power to be overcomers. Help us, Lord. For the devil knows he has but a short time. And as the shorter the time, the more fierce his wrath upon your people is going to be. But we are so thankful that he that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. We pray, Lord, that you be with the pastor as he breaks the bread of life to us. May his words be encouraging to us. If we are questioning your love for us, if we are questioning your power to save us, if we happen to be questioning your faithfulness, may the sermon today bring insight that you are a God who can never lie, that you do love us, that you are faithful to us, and that you will show mercy to those who ask of you. And Father, as there is going to be a baptism at the end of our service, we just pray that your Holy Spirit will continue to be with the baptismal candidate, Lord, as he goes forward, walking in newness of you. Bless him in the days coming that he too can have a power from heaven to live a victorious life in Christ. And Lord, may he be a powerful witness wherever he may be, at home, at work, in the store, wherever, Lord, that people will see Jesus when they see him. And the happiness and the joy that has come into his life, that they too will ask questions and also see and taste and see that the Lord is good. Help us, Lord, in the coming days. We just pray that you would give us the faith, strong faith, to be like Daniel in the lion's den. Strong faith to be like the three Hebrew boys in front of the king in the golden statue. Help us, Lord, because we know what is coming in the days ahead, and we just pray with our hearts that you will keep us faithful until you come in the clouds of glory. Bless us, bless this church, bless every family that is represented in this local congregation, Lord. Guide us and direct us in the days ahead. We ask these things your precious and blessed name. Amen.
once again, happy Sabbath. So for those who are here, for those who are home, uh, wherever you are, uh, maybe in Rockford, somewhere else, uh, that God may bless you today as we uh, get together here for this special Sabbath. Before we start this message, I'd like to invite uh, uh, Levi Le- 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 to come here. And I was asking him to help me with the pronunciation of his name. And I know that I'm going to uh, sometimes mess up, but uh, getting closer. So we, we talked this morning, so we talked this week. And uh, this is a young man that is seeking Jesus, and he wants to be part of our church. And he has been studying with his family. And... Um, and willing to grow. And, uh, and in our conversation this week, we, we talked about the, uh, our church, the, the vows. And, um, and many times we have the baptismal vows in front of the entire church. Sometimes we have just like uh, uh, the pastor and the person. And that's what we chose to do. So we had, we had the baptismal vows this morning. So just want to let you know that uh, he said yes to every question and that uh, he agrees and he understands uh, what we are as Seventh-day Adventists. And, uh, and since uh, uh, we have uh, this uh, different service because of the pandemic, so we usually have the baptismal certificate given after the baptism, uh, but uh, we are going to close the service in the baptismal tank with a prayer. So I would like to give him this certificate as a reminder of your commitment to follow Jesus. I told him this morning that uh, in the moment that he joins the church, that which happens in the moment that he is baptized, uh, so he's not only part of the Rockford Seventh-day Adventist Church family. But he is part of the Seventh-day Adventist family in the world with over 20 million uh, members in more than 200 countries. So this is a big family. And for me, it's a joy when I go to different places and I have the opportunity to visit those churches. Um, um, I feel at home. Because I know that this is my family. It doesn't matter the language that we speak. So it's our family. So, and um, I just want to uh, let you know that uh, you're part of this big family already. And uh, it is a joy to, like, uh, to, to welcome you today as you baptize as part of this, this family. God bless you. And our message for today, a new beginning, that's the title of our message. And this is based on John chapter 4, verse 4 through 15. Um, I'm going to tell this story during the sermon. We are not going to read those verses, but you're going to identify the story as I tell it. Uh, but uh, why do we need a new beginning? I think that uh, Jesus came to this world, and that's why we celebrate Christmas, because we do need a new beginning. Um, And that happens in Jesus Christ. Not only in our individual level as we accept him, but the world as a whole is going to have a new beginning because one day Jesus decided to come to this world to save us. And that happened even before the foundation of this world. So that's why when we go to the book of Revelation, and we see there in chapter 21 that God will make what? A new heaven, a new earth. Everything is going to be new. So we are looking forward to this new beginning because we need that. As human beings, we see that this world is falling apart. We need a new beginning. 
And as individuals, we also know that we need a new beginning because we have all messed up. Uh, many times we say things that we regret later, that we'd like to take back. We do things that we wish we could undo. We miss opportunities, and that happens in all spheres of our lives. And sometimes we make mistakes at work and we hurt people. We make mistakes at home and we hurt the people that we love the most. And many times we hurt God with our choices as well. Uh, a new year, it's a reminder that we can have a new beginning. So we had Christmas, the reason why we can have hope in a new beginning. And we have the new year, which is the opportunity that we have to have this new beginning in Jesus. And uh, 2020 was probably one of those very unique, unusual years that uh, many people would like to forget. So there were so many things in this world. But at the same time, we have to keep in our minds that uh, we are getting closer and closer to the day that Jesus is coming. And we can be thankful for that. So 2021 might not be very different when we think about the world. So hopefully we will. Uh, but uh, if it doesn't, so remember that uh, it can be a new beginning for us in Jesus. So, and because we have messed up, we, we, we need this, uh, this new beginning to turn our backs on the past, to look forward, to hope that uh, uh, this time is going to be different, that things are going to get better. And there is something exciting about starting over. A new challenge, new experiences, new opportunities, and I love the beginning of a new year. Because I have plans that I would like to accomplish. And uh, big challenges I have ahead of me. And I look back over the past year, 2020. And I realize that there were many mistakes that I made. There are things that I like to do that I didn't. Or things that I didn't want to do that I did. So perhaps, so you have similar thoughts. And I remember when I was a child going to school, the beginning of a new school year, and, um, and it was a time for new things, new books, new textbooks, new teachers sometimes, a new subjects to be learned, and then um, there were New Year's resolutions as well, that I'm going to do my homework every day, I'm going to, uh, to behave better, I'm going to obey my parents, uh, I'm going to exercise regularly, and I'm going to spend more time with God. And, um, and I don't think I'm that different from the time that I was a child, because I still have those uh, ideas that uh, uh, it's a good time to have a new beginning. Um, and I believe that many people have that expectation. That's why they like changes. Uh, so, and uh, we, we like to start over. Why? Because the future holds the hope for something better. We have in our hearts always this desire for something that is not here. Something that uh, is, uh, is going to get better. So that's why a new beginning is always important. But... Things don't always stay this way. Things many times don't go the way that we expect. And after too many disappointments, we often give up. We lose hope. A person can only start over so many times before begin to wonder, what is the point? So what is the point of starting again, having a new beginning, if I'm going to fail again? If I'm going to make the same mistakes that I made so many times, what is the point of trying to have a new beginning? And of course, people vary. The number of disappointments necessary before someone gives up hope differs, changes from person to person. 
But the Bible tells us, the Bible tells us a story very interesting about someone who reached that point of uh, losing hope, of, uh, uh, of uh, not having any expectations for the future. So, and this is the, the woman at the well. So I would like you to imagine, to think about that woman in this message. So she picks up the jar because she needs to go to the well to get some water. And she opens the door. And the moment that she opens the door, a lot of light hit her face. It was the hottest moment in the day. So she could have chosen a cooler time during the day to go to the well. But um, she decided to go that moment on purpose. She didn't want to meet anyone. So outside it was very quiet. So not that quiet. There were people far off. There were animals making noises. But she's alone. And she is uh, looking uh, up and down uh, the dusty street uh, and doesn't see any other woman, women. And she thinks that that's the perfect time to go to the well. So it's hot. She, had, she could have chosen a cooler time of the day, but uh, she doesn't want to face uh, other women. So in her town, in her city, she could be considered the bad girl. A lot of baggage, a lot of history. She has not married the man that she is living with. She, has, she had already five hus husbands. Five times she had tried to have a new start. Five times she had tried to have a new life, a new beginning. And now she has given up on marriage. She has given up on happiness. She has given up on hope. And she's just trying to survive her life. For her, there is no turning back, no new start. She tried everything that she could. No new beginnings in sight. So she has accepted her lot as an outcast. That's the way that she saw herself. Someone without hope. But it is tragic to admit that. But there, this woman is not alone. She is a picture of millions or maybe billions of people in the world today and throughout the centuries. People reaching this point of hopelessness. After too many disappointments, it can happen to anyone. To anyone. And after a while, you may begin to feel that uh, there is no new beginning actually for you. But I want to remind you one thing. That when you feel that way, when you feel that there is no new beginning, remember, it's just a feeling. And many times we cannot trust our feelings. So that's why we have God's word. To remind us of what, what reality is. And the Bible does not agree with this feeling. So when we see here uh, in the Bible, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, we see a message of hope that says here, Paul said, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is, she is a new creation. The new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. A new creation. A person that is dedicated himself or herself to Christ is a new creation. And this is just one word in Greek, new creation, just one word. And it has two different meanings. They are connected, but two different meanings. The first meaning, a creative act. An act of creation. And second, the thing created, the creation itself. 
So Paul, when he was using this word here, this powerful word, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17, he meant that when someone has decided to dedicate their lives to Jesus, Jesus begins a new act of creation in their lives. And I just want you to understand that this is not just a merely reformed life rehabilitated life. It's a new creation. God recreating you from inside. And uh, they begin a brand new life. So, and uh, this is the brand new life that we cannot produce on our own with New Year's resolutions. It's something much bigger than that. And Paul explains how this can take place in verse 14 and 15, the same chapter when he says, For Christ's love compels us, because we are convinced that one died for all. We therefore all died, and he died for all, that those who live should not lo no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So this verse is talking about Jesus, about his death and resurrection, and saying that the same way we should die for ourselves and have a new life in Christ Jesus. And this is the, uh, uh, what baptism symbolizes. So your old life dies and you are buried under the waters, just like Jesus died and was buried in a tomb. And then you come back, you stand up, the same way that Jesus stood up from the grave, you will stand up as a new person. So you today, with this decision to be baptized today, so this is the uh, symbolic moment of a new beginning that you're saying, so I die for myself, I have a new life with Jesus. So just like Jesus died for us and came back to life to, to be our intercessor, and for this reason, Paul is saying here in verse 17, the old has gone. The new has come. In Christ Jesus, we can have a new life. We can have this act of creation happening in our lives. So when we turn back to our Bible story, we see that Jesus offered offered that woman, that hopeless woman, this sort of new life. So she came to take water from the well. But now Jesus was offering her something much better, the living water. The living water. And as she nears the well, like, uh, she noticed that uh, Jesus was there. So just going back a little in, into the story. She was not sure. So should I go back home? So I don't want to see anyone. I want to come get my water alone, go back home. Don't want to meet anyone. But Jesus was there sitting. There was a reason why Jesus was there. There was a reason why Jesus sent the disciples someone else to be in that place, just waiting for that Samaritan woman. And she decided to go. Maybe that man is not going to say anything. But did, Jesus did. And uh, by the way, uh, we see this conversation. And that uh, based on the culture, the background of the time, Jesus should not have spoken with her. For at least three reasons. The first one, because she was a woman. And, uh, and a man did not speak with a woman, particularly if her husband or her father were not present. So Jesus, based on the culture of the time, was not supposed to talk with her. Secondly, she was Samaritan. Jesus was a Jew. There was a lot of uh, relationship problems between those two people. But Jesus was beyond and above that. So he was not so concerned about those differences. And third, that woman was living in sin. Um, she, uh, 
she was living with someone that was not her husband. And according to the time, even among the Samaritan, nobody could speak with her anymore. She was an outcast. She was alone in this world. And Jesus knew that, but he decided to talk with her anyways because Jesus was trying to bring hope back to that life. And then Jesus offers her living water, the living water which quenches a person's thirst and gives eternal life. And when we go back to the Old Testament, uh, we have a better understanding of what this living water is, a fountain of living water. Uh, when we go to Psalm 36, verse 9, when we go to Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 13, and we see those verses, and we see that God is the fountain of living water. God is the fountain of li living water. And when Jesus is saying that he wants to give that woman living water, he was saying, I am the Messiah. I am the one, the only one that can give you hope. I am the only one that uh, can give you a new life. I am what you have been longing for your entire life. What you're trying to find in the first husband, or the second, or the third, or the fourth, or the fifth, and everything that you did, you're looking for something that was not there. So I'm the one that can fill your life with purpose and joy. But the woman does not realize what Jesus is talking about yet. And when he begins, and that's the moment that Jesus begins to become very personal, too personal maybe. And Jesus tells her about her failed marriages. Can you imagine that? And then he reminds her of her past and all the disappointments that she had. And uh, with each word, the door of her pain is forced a little more open. Too many memories. Too much pain. And she begins to realize what Jesus is offering her. A brand new beginning. Jesus brought the past back in that conversation. Not to hurt her, but to help her to understand that she could have a new beginning. A new beginning. But the pain was too much for her. And in her mind, she steps away from his offer, and he throws, she throws up a smoky screen between herself and Jesus. And uh, she changes the subject to the place of worship that should be or in Jerusalem or in Samaria. And because that was the discussion of the time, she was trying to distract Jesus from what he was trying to offer her. So and it's not easy for us to confront the past. It's not easy for us to confront our failures, our disappointments, our pain. It hurts. And for this reason, many people just decided to uh, try to pretend that things never happened. But uh, that leaves us emotionally bankrupted. So, in fact, it's possible for us to get used to living in spiritual poverty. To live without hope. And do you know why people many times decide to live without hope? Because to hope, again, is, is scary. Especially after being disappointed so many times. If we begin to hope again, we can be disappointed again. If we try to start over once more, we might just fail once more. And just like that lady, she decided, I have tried so many times. Why should I try once again? But however scary it might be to think of making a new start, a new beginning, that's exactly what the Bible is promising here. If anyone is in Christ, he, she is a new creation. 
He, she is a new creation. But what happens with this new creation? So what, wh why should we be a new creation? What happens to us when we get this chance at, uh, of a new beginning? And Paul says something very interesting in the same chapter, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 through 20. We see it's the same context. Uh, starting in verse 17, he says here, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. He, she, has become a new creation. The old has, has gone, the new has come, uh, the new is here, and this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. So Jesus reconciled us to God. And now he gave us the same ministry for us to do for other people. The ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. And then he says, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors. The ministry of reconciliation. What message is that? That's the message of the gospel. That's the message that uh, we as human beings, we are reconciled to God through Christ Jesus. And now that we have become reconciled with God, we have a mission. We have a purpose that is bigger than ourselves. The mission of sharing this message of reconciliation, the good news of the gospel, the message of reconciliation between God and human beings through Christ Jesus. So let's go back to our story here, because eventually the woman at the well realized that she has met the Messiah. She understood finally that she was uh, before the one that uh, she was longing for. And that uh, he has begun to recreate her right there at that moment. So, outwardly, she was the same. If you were there, you could see her face. And her face was the same. Her body was the same. But uh, something happened inside. And inside, she was already a new creation. And she begins to change. She no longer sees herself as a hopeless outcast. Instead, she realized that she has been entrusted with a message. With wonderfully good news. The Messiah is here. The Savior is here. God has reconciled us to himself. God has made it all okay between us again in the Messiah. And this woman now who walked to the well to get water, walked to the well with our friend. She had nobody. She had no hope. She had no future. And the same woman who had nothing and nobody in this world runs back to the town because she has met the Messiah. She has become Jesus' ambassador. And I would like you to uh, see with me what the Bible says here as we go closer to the end of the chapter. Because this is fantastic. We see uh, what happened in this uh, woman's life. Because verse 28, John chapter 4, verse 28 through 30. And then we are going to read verse 39 through 42. He says, then leaving her water jar. So remember, why did she... Go did she go to the well to get water? She, she took her jar and she went to the well. But now it says that uh, she left her water jar behind. So that became secondary. That was not that important anymore. The woman went back to the town where she was uh, an outcast and now she said to the people, come, see a man 
who told me everything that I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? And what happened? That woman that was lonely, outcast, now with that message saying, this is the Messiah. So how did people respond? So it says here, they came out of the town and made their way toward Jesus. So, and then we go to verse 39. And we see they have a, a conversation with Jesus. Jesus ministered to them. And the 30, verse 39 through 42 says, Many of the Samaritans from the town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. And he told me everything I did, I ever did. So the Samaritans came to him and they urged Jesus to stay with them. And Jesus did. Jesus stayed there two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. And then it continues saying here, they said to the woman, to that woman that was outcast, we no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves. We have known that this man really is the Savior of the world. The testimony of one person that proclaimed Jesus with passion. The testimony of a person that became a new creation in Jesus. You know, uh, we don't have anything to offer unless we receive from someone. And uh, we don't have anything to offer to the world, any hope, unless we receive that hope from Jesus. You cannot uh, give like, uh, people the opportunity to have a new life if you don't have a, a, a new life yourself in Christ Jesus. So that's why it's so important, this new beginning. When we meet Jesus as our personal Messiah, then our lives are filled with a deeper purpose. Then we become his ambassadors. It's more than just uh, living this life to pay the bills. There is something bigger that God has for us. Then we are entrusted with this message of reconciliation. So I would like to ask you this morning, where does this message find you today? So this woman, she had different stages in her life. And maybe... You today, you are in one of those different stages, a season of your life. Perhaps everything is uh, doing well. So, of course, you made mistakes, but you have not lost hope, which is good. That means that uh, you know that uh, a new beginning in Christ is possible. And, and you can come to him anytime. But there are many people, and that might be you, whatever you are. Uh, many people falling apart. People that uh, tried many times, uh, starting over, over and over again, just to realize that uh, uh, trying to have a new life, a new beginning, is an attempt to make yourself feel better for a while, but it doesn't change anything. So um, perhaps you have met the Messiah, just like this woman did. And you have gone, gone through the ups and downs. You have tried everything. But now you understand that you don't need to live in a life of hopelessness anymore. Uh, you don't need to uh, trust yourself anymore. Because now you can have a new life in Christ, in the Messiah. So it's a new creation. Or the last stage. Now you understand that you have not been only made a new creation, but now you are ambassador. You represent him. You have a message to share, the message of reconciliation, and you have been set free from trust yourself, losing hope, and now you can carry a message that God has reconciled us with him through Christ Jesus. And that's the great message that we can share with other people. So, so we may be in any stage 
in our lives. But uh, the good news is that uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you are today or where you were yesterday. Uh, because uh, today is a new day. Today is a new day. Paul wrote in the same context in first, Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1 and verse 2. Uh, the following words, and this is, this is the last verse that I would like to share with you. Um, Paul here says, As God's co-workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. For he says, In the time of my favor I heard you, and in the day of salvation I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now, today, is the day of salvation. So it doesn't matter what happened in the past. It doesn't even matter what happened this morning. What God is telling us today and what God is telling us now is that now, today, is the time of salvation. So 2020 might have been a very difficult year in many different aspects, but we can move on. We can move forward. God is giving us a new day. God is giving us a new year. And Jesus is offering you today the same thing that he offered that woman at the well. A new creation. A new creation. The living water. And even if the world gets worse in many different ways, we can still become a new creation because that is starts in our hearts and it will happen take place every day every day until the day that finally we are going to see our savior and this is the message they like to uh, give to you to our church this morning the last message in this church building for 2020 so next Sabbath is a new year already. I just want to remind you of that. You can have a new life in Jesus. Be a new creation. And what a wonderful way of uh, finishing our service, the last service of, our, of 2020, with a baptism. To see someone dedicating his life to Jesus. So we are going to have a, a, a song now as we get ready for the baptism. And then we are going to have uh, our closing prayer from the, from the baptismal tank. For our closing song, we will be singing hymn number 125, Joy to the World, number 125, and we will be singing all four stanzas of 125, Joy to the World. Repeat the sounding 
What a beautiful moment we can uh, see this morning to see what we making a decision to follow Jesus, to have a new life, a new beginning. And what a uh, perfect timing. So the last Sabbath of the year, uh, getting closer to the beginning of a new year. And it is a joy for me this morning as we are here talking about a new beginning in Jesus Christ uh, to see you making this decision. You as a young man, for, with your entire life ahead of you. Uh, I just imagine the beautiful and wonderful things that God is going to do in your life and through your life. How many people are going to hear about Jesus because of your decision? The many places that God is going to take you. Places that you never imagined before. And then you're going one day to look back at your life and see what a wonderful life I had because uh, I made the decision to surrender my life to Jesus. And you're going to see, not only here on this earth, but one day in heaven, the opportunity to see all the people that made the decision to follow Jesus because of your life. And you're going to see those people surrounding you and thanking you for everything that you showed them, that you told them, that changed their lives forever. And not only you, but uh, uh, all of them, all the redeemed, we are going to have the opportunity to throw our crowns on the feet of, of Jesus. So I just imagine the scene. When one person makes a decision to follow Jesus, how that one person, how you, can make thousands of people to make the decision in their lives as well. And it, it's for this reason, with great joy, that uh, I, as a minister of the gospel, baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. God bless you. What a beautiful moment. And I'm sure that many of us here, we made already our decision to walk with Jesus. But life happens, and sometimes we lose our focus, and sometimes uh, we get distracted by work or by other things in this life. I just want to remind you that uh, you can have a new beginning today. If you have never made this decision to walk with Jesus, or if you have made this decision, but uh, somehow you forgot your vows. So today is the day of salvation. You don't need to wait for tomorrow, thinking that one day you're going to have the, uh, going to have the perfect opportunity, that uh, tomorrow is going to be the perfect day, that there will always be another opportunity. As the, the Word of God says, today is the day of salvation. So let's commit ourselves to Jesus today. So those who are watching online, I pray also for you, wherever you are, um, that uh, God may help you, remind you that you have a new life in Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we... We are closing 2020. This is the last Sabbath. This is the last service that we are having here in this place. But this is not the last moment that we are before you in your presence. And we are so thankful that uh, in Jesus Christ we have a new beginning. Not just a beginning of a new, a new year with new ideals, but we can have today uh, the beginning of a new life because of what Jesus has done for us. Father, remind us of that. Help us to remember that uh, 
We can try and try and try, and we are going to fail every single time and be disappointed with ourselves. But if we surrender everything to you, we are going to have the beginning, the new start, the new life that only you, only you can give us. So I ask your blessings upon us, upon your church in Rockford, upon those who are watching, upon um, our community so that we may uh, have the, the boldness uh, to share what Jesus has done for us to, with others, be with our church throughout the world, worldwide, and help us, Father, to be ready for the day, for the great day of the second coming of Jesus. We love you. And we surrender everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.